Lifestyles of the not rich and famous. Minimalism has been a big trend uh, for, we speculated about a decade or so, it might be a little more or less than that, but mm-hmm. we see lots of reality TV shows now yeah. about trying to live more efficiently, not only by reducing the amount of stuff that mm-hmm. you have in your home, but the actual size of your home too. Sure. And so living off the grid has been a thing for ages, right? People who don't maybe trust the government or don't yeah. want to pay utility bills what and does, stuff like that. What is Is the definition of living off the grid. So I was listening to a guy who lives off the grids in the, in the States talk on a podcast the other day, and he was saying it's simply not relying on any government o r g a n i z a t i o n for utilities. So water, power, sewage, heating, that's all self-contained. You know, wow. you've got it. down and locked on your property somehow, somewhere. Yeah, you don't have any power in your home Yeah, um, that's connected to the grid. Uh-huh. Yeah, you don't have... You've got maybe solar cells instead. Yeah, you don't have any heating system that's connected to the grid or mm-hmm. water system that's connected to the grid. So that's why they say off the grid, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and so off the grid, maybe it's slightly different. You can be off the grid and do what we're talking about today as well. We're talking, yeah, more like this concept of tiny homes. Mm-hmm. Like, and tiny homes, it can mean just any small house, but there is actually a definite... definition in the states it's really taken off as well it's any property that is under 300 square foot uh-huh. so that in meters is about 27 square meters how so, many y o n g is yeah that? exactly you've been here that long yeah. it's, it's, it's less <laughs> it's about k u p y o n g Oh. So nine pyong. So that's yeah. like those small shoebox studios that you yeah. can get here in Korea, right? Yep. Yep. So in Korea, yeah, if you're a single person, you might think, well, yeah, I've lived that life, you know. But for the states and how big their houses are, right. that's a massive reduction. It absolutely right? is, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I was listening to that guy who lives off the grid as well. And, and what he was saying is... The reality TV shows, a lot of the time, they make it look sexy and glamorous and cool, (laughs) right? They they absolutely do. They make it look like this is how everyone should be living. Yeah. Yeah. Because even if you have a a bigger home, it's probably not not as nice as this mini home that we've designed. Yeah, and it looks all pristine, right? Mm -hmm. And beautiful with hardly any furniture in it. And a lot of the pictures I found online as well look like that. So I was like, yeah, this should be easy. I Mm -hmm. think I could do it. And that guy was saying it's It's not like that whatsoever. And you've got to, he said, the tip for anyone listening who's interested in doing this, because it is great for the environment and Mm -hmm. it is good for your bank balance as Mm -hmm. well. You've got to live minimalist wherever you're living now. Like you've got to reduce before you start living in a smaller Uh, property. Like get used to that life of living on the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. And if you think you can do it, then take the next step. He said he's seen so many people, because there's lots of online communities globally as well Mm -hmm. for tiny homes and whatnot. And there's so many people who are like, okay, I'm going back to the city. This is ridiculous. You know, I can't live like this. And if you are living off the grid, it's the sewage side, which is a big hassle as well. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine because you're not using a toilet like normally we would. Mm -hmm. It has to be like either you're taking care of the own... You know, excrement. Septic tanks yeah. are a big thing. Yeah, exactly. And so it's 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 not going to be easy. <laughs> yeah, and so in Korea, tiny homes have kind of started to boom as well because we had that message earlier that Pegok might not buy you an apartment in Gangnam these yeah. days. It's not that bad. I heard the average price in Seoul is now Shibirok, so oh, that's okay. like a million dollars. Oh, let me just go get my wallet. Yes, go and get your million dollars, <laughs> right? In fact, if you had that, I could buy ten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you had the ten million dollars, <laughs> right. but. Um, It has meant that the young people in Seoul, you know, they are completely flabbergasted. You know, there's no hope, basically. Uh -uh. There was some weird statistic that you'd have to work 200 years without spending money to get an apartment. Not too many of us can live that long for a start. So many people in Korea apparently looking to these in the mountains. So you buy a plot of land and then you have a tiny home, which is even self-assembled. You can put it up yourself like a flat pack. Oh, interesting. I didn't know this was a trend in the country. I want to learn a little more about this uh, when we come back. Uh, So let's get back on topic here, shall we? Uh Tiny homes. And you mentioned before the break uh, that people, there's a trend now here in Korea where young people are moving out of the city to buy these tiny homes 
up in the mountains. Well, they're not there. They buy the homes and they're like flat packed in some cases. And they're about the size of a container, if you think of like a steel container. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go and as long as they've got land, they don't necessarily even have to buy the land. If you can rent it, right, then you can just set up your home on a very small plot. Oh, I didn't know that. So there is land in Korea somewhere where, you know, out in the countryside somewhere, and you'd probably be way out in the countryside in the mountains, you said, where you can just rent the space. I mean, if you found an owner of that land who would rent it to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't know if that's common, but a lot of land that's in rural areas or in mountains is cheap in Korea. Like, it's just Seoul and the metropolitan areas where land is very expensive. And you said the the homes you can construct yourself. I've seen those, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On these reality shows. Have you seen them, Kate, where the, the homes come in like... It's almost like putting together like Lego or something. Sure. Yeah. They just fit, the pieces fit together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't take a genius to do it. You need a bit of elbow grease, you know, to get yeah. up the panels and stuff. But this kind of, it didn't start, but there was a good example of it during the PyeongChang Winter Olympics. I wonder if when you went, Steve, you saw any of these. They were tiny homes then, and they were built to be even smaller than your regular tiny homes. So about Chilpyeong, about 19 square meters. Oh. Oh my gosh. Uh, made with like a wooden kind of exterior. I'm showing the guys in the studio the pictures. And then inside you had a little kind of cubby loft area mm-hmm. where you would have the bed at the back and then a kitchen sink and then a tiny like shower slash toilet area mm-hmm. underneath the bed area. What do you mean? You wonder if I saw them? Because like, where... these were for Pyeongchang for people to stay because there wasn't enough accommodation for international visitors. Oh. So they built a load of these in the rural fields around Pyeongchang. I did not notice, no. They were just temporary as well, so mm-hmm. they did take them down afterwards ah. but people were really uh, amazed by that, how such a small space could be used so efficiently. Do you think, Kate... Yeah. Um, that you could live happily in one of these uh, Chil Pyong, Nine <laughs> Pyong uh, tiny homes out in the mountains somewhere? Well, I think the kind of the upside, I guess, of having a tiny home is that you have the whole nature as your backgra- backyard slash front yard. And mm-hmm. I think that's like the plus side to it. That is very attractive. Yeah. yeah. And as long as that's provided... I think I might give it a go. Because you'd have the internet. In Korea, you'd have connection, right? Because we're such a small country compared Mm -hmm. to like the US where you might have no connection. Right. So you wouldn't be off the grid. Right. You could still have your internet and you could have your computer or whatever. But everything else... Yeah, you're you're out there by yourself. Yeah, and if that doesn't take your fancy, there was this really interesting case. uh, I think it was last year it was in the papers, and I'm showing uh, Steve and Kate the picture. It's a five-story... Again, we talked about this yesterday that I went to see a model house, but a very small, narrow house Mm -hmm. in the Dongdaemun area where an architect bought a plot of land that was about Chipyong, so a Mm -hmm. bit bigger than what we've been talking about, um, that... People thought you couldn't construct anything on there. Mm -hmm. But he constructed his own five-story house on this. And guess how much that was in total? The land and the construction together. Five stories. It's just a room on each story. How much? Three hundred thousand dollars. Wow! So about Samok, right? Wow! In Dongdaemun, exactly right. Wow. Central Seoul, because no one thought you could do anything useful with the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah so because the, f- the the piece of land is exactly the same size as the house. Yeah, yeah. it's just that the house is built <laughs> vertically. Yes, and you don't have to pay for the air. No, exactly. So you can build up as as much as the city will let you. Right, right. And this was next to a mountain, so they let them have it there. The only stipulation it had to be white to fit in. with the background it's next to the old Seoul wall Mm. and this got a lot of attention from overseas media media in Korea saying you can't buy like a decent size apartment for double that in Seoul that's really true yeah but loads of people gave him a lot of hate I think out of jealousy they were like well you got to walk up five stories of stairs to get to the (laughs) bathroom that is also true yeah but he said you know it fits our needs I don't like all this hate you know this is a solution for us I'm not saying it's for everyone but he's now started his own company giving solutions like this to people who want a small plot of land yeah but you know privately he complains about it every time he goes to the bathroom why do I need to go to the toilet again why did I put this on the first First floor. <laughs> uh, it is a great idea. Um, could I do it? I think I could mm. for a period of time. Mm. Uh. I, I would like to do it as um, an experiment for myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To see how 
reliant I've become on city life. Sure. You know, I make jokes about living in Gimpo now, which is outside of Seoul. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's kind of like the burbs. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But I'm from a town of a thousand people. Mm. So Gimpo is not the burbs. No. <laughs> Where I'm from is the actual burb, 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 burbs. That's the countryside. Yeah. So I would like to do it just to see like how, you know, I've lived in Korea for 20 years. In, in Seoul for 20 years. So, how, <laughs> how much mu- of Nova Scotia do you still have within you? <laughs> Absolutely. How much of a city boy yeah. have I actually become and sure. how, how much of that how much of that countryside lifestyle do I actually miss? I'd be really curious to do an experiment like do this. Do you miss any particular aspects of that? Oh, absolutely I do. What are the main things like space? Okay. Mm. It's a bigger plot than nature. Mm. Sure. I mean Nova Scotia's nature is beautiful. Not to say that Korea's isn't. It sure. is, but I'm just saying when you're when you live in Nova Scotia, it's kind of all around you all the right. time. Sure. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I'd be I'd be curious to do it. When you say trend though, mm. Does that mean a few people have done this? It is not like they're flocking to do this, but yeah. many youngsters are now really giving mm-hmm. up on even trying to buy a house. So there are a few different trends, like moving to the countryside just in general, just yeah. to a normal place. That was in the news a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a yeah. lot of like exodus of Seoul. The population kind of peaked and has been dropping a little bit recently. Yeah, yeah because people were just like, I can't live here. I remember it was, an, was it a government initiative? I don't know if I'm using that word properly in this context, mm-hmm. initiative, but I think the government was trying to get young people to move outside of the city to areas of the countryside and farming mm-hmm. was one of the ideas that the government right. was introducing as a possible yeah. uh, source of sustainment for young couples moving out there. Yeah, way more young farmers these days than a couple of years ago. And also there's a, a small trend of people trying to just live out of their cars, not necessarily camper vans, but just larger cars and mm-hmm. just travel around and like pull up here, stay here for a little while. Uh, maybe they're camping, maybe they're staying in very cheap motels and mm-hmm. stuff. That's been something with no fixed address. Right. And I know that with COVID, because so much of the work is now just being more remote, mm. you work out of home anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that there's really no need to stay in the city because it's not like yep. you're commuting every day to an office. Sure. And so more and more people I know are moving outside of the, of the city area where housing is way cheaper. Or they're even, you know, kind of upping and going all the way down to Jeju. And like they hope plan like spending two, three years there mm-hmm. before coming back to Seoul or something like that. Please tell them to move to Kimpo. <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah. over. So I can have some people down here. <laughs> it totally makes sense, though. Mm. You know, um, if you're working from home and, and we'll see after everybody around the world gets vaccinated, who knows how long that'll take. Mm. Uh, but if the new trend is for and the new thing is for people to work from home and companies get on board with this, why would you bother if you're working remotely yeah. paying $1,500, $1,600, $1,700 a month in rent, $2,000 yeah. or more sometimes in downtown Seoul? Yeah. Why would oh. you bother when you can simply live outside and, and pay probably less than half of that? In a yeah. nice environment as right. well. Yeah, in more space and in, in nature's around you. It's going to be interesting to see. I didn't know that the Seoul population had peaked and now dipped a little bit. Yeah, it's been a couple of years, I think, that the Seoul metropolitan area, or at least Seoul City for sure, the population did decrease a little. And we're getting to that super age society soon. It's mm-hmm. going to be interesting how Seoul's going to change. There, yeah, it does suggest that a shift is coming, doesn't mm, it? Yeah, there's a corner. We just don't know when that corner is going to appear. Uh, all right, we'll be wrapping up the show with your messages.